What is going on guys, welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I am back with another Destiny 2 video and today I'm going to be covering another aspect of the Bungie weekly update and that is the changes coming to exotic weapons. That we know of the exotic masterworks which in my opinion are a great new addition which add a great amount of grind which is what we all want and need but a masterwork weapon won't necessarily make it feel more exotic. There are plenty of legendary masterworks which ain't that great and they don't make much of a difference to the weapon they're applied to. The same in my opinion could apply to exotics and Bungie know this, hence why they are addressing many many exotics, basically buffing them in many different ways, making exotics feel exotics the way they should be. Within the weekly update they showcased three weapons, three exotics which have been buffed but there's quite a few others we're going to go through in today's video also but quoting Bungie right here. Over the last few weeks senior sandbox designer John, I can't pronounce that second name I apologise, has been giving previews of how some exotic weapons are evolving at a base level to feel more powerful in Season 3. We keeping the streak up. This week, Tractor Cannon, Hardlight and Borealis are up for conversation. Quoting John right here, quick thanks and recognition to the video capture team that have been working hard to play, record and publish your stuff on a tight deadline. The Tractor Cannon has delivered a high amount of spectacle and has a huge fun factor but was lacking utility for many players. To address this, in addition to the expected damage and physics impulse, any target hit by a Tractor Cannon now has a debuff applied that adds suppression and makes the target vulnerable to void damage for 10 seconds. Suppression will function as you expect, so in the Crucible this will shut down active supers and prevent players from using their abilities. In PvE this will pop most enemies in the suppression state where they cower and grovel. The void vulnerability adds a significant weakness to any source of incoming void damage. So if you're a solo player, run it with your favourite void weapon and or subclass for optimal effect. If you're running with a coordinated fire team, we're both excited and terrified to see how fast you can mount some of our hard bosses with strategic void attacks. The void vulnerability does not stack with itself, but it does stack with other damage debuffs. Get to work. So the changes to the tractor cannon are interesting for sure. Can't wait to try it out and test it myself. Next up they speak about changes with the hard light. Hard Light is inheriting the Borealis damage type reload swap. Holding reload will cycle elemental damage types in combat. The teaser clip shows off this pretty well, but what it doesn't show very clearly is the other interesting change we made to lean into the weapons gameplay. The balanced projectiles have always been a dazzling laser show, but actually using them to do real work on your enemies around corners or off of walls has been difficult. It's more of a suppression tactic than reliable offence. One option we considered was preserving aim assist for the lifetime of the projectiles, but we couldn't commit due to the sheer amount of pressure this would put on our runtime engine. Imagine 12 players on a console in 6v6 all using this weapon, each firing around every 3 frames and our aim assist call trying to predict the trajectory of each bullet for up to 3 bounces and then attempt to correct it to hit a target. So rather than making it easier for you to land that bounce shot, we made the payoff better for when it does happen. Bounce bullets now do double damage. We're looking forward to seeing some montages from their geometry nerds out there. Wow, that sounds absolutely crazy. Double the damage when you bounce a bullet, that's just going to be ridiculous. People are going to be running at you, shooting at the floor, hoping the bullets bounce up and hit you. But that's what I'm going to be doing anyway. They then speak about the Borealis and quoting Bungie right here again. So a natural question that may come from this is, doesn't this change make Hard Light a better choice than Borealis? While Hard Light will definitely have more uptime due to living in your energy slot, Borealis is also getting an update that will make it a tempting choice. The utility of having a weapon that can match any type shield on the fly is good, but in order to make the weapon great we wanted to double down on the reward for successfully pulling this off. After breaking an enemy shield with a matching damage type, Borealis now deals double damage until the next reload or damage type swap. For PvE activities, it gives the weapon a more reliable benefit than hard light in both casual modes and high pressure activities. However, it's not a perk that was meant just for PvE. This behaviour also applies to enemy guardians in the Crucible while their supers are active. Simply put, if you use a void round to break shield and or kill an enemy sentinel titan who is actively using their super, you have double damage sniper rounds. Yes, that's a one hit kill to the body until you die or reload. It's pretty rare to pull it off and requires a fair amount of predictive awareness. 
but we've had it happen organically a few times during internal play tests and I'm highly confident that skilled players will be able to make some amazing plays with this weapon. Changes are great, but I am useless with a sniper rifle within PvP, I just haven't used them enough. So still, even with the dumber damage and so forth, I'd still rather use the hard life, but that's just me. Other exotic weapon changes we know about are the Rat King, Bungie State, the Rat King, which already has something of a fan base, but definitely has room to improve. Of the stats that improve with more fire team members running Rat King, the strongest is probably the increased rate of fire. Unfortunately, the DPS potential is hard to realise because some people can't physically just pull the trigger fast enough to cash in on this benefit or don't know to try. To make sure this is both fast and used, we made the Rat King full auto to ensure the rate of fire increase can make a difference when running in a pack. Another pain point was that the restriction of having Rat King only activate when allies have Rat Kings equipped in hand felt a bit situational. Rat King perk now triggers when fireteam members have Rat King slotted as their kinetic weapon, stowed or in hand. We also front loaded the stat benefits of Rat King so they increased a bit more drastically with one or two fireteam members and up the base invisibility timer of Vermin to 7 seconds. Last but not least, and not to overly tease, but why not, I'm going to tease, the masterwork upgrade for Rat King is going to put a tasty garnish on this metal you won't want to miss out on. So that sounds pretty cool too. Next up they talk about changes with the Skyburner's Ulf. When firing from the hip, Skyburner's Ulf now lobs slower projectiles at a faster rate of fire that trap targets and explode. The tracking functionality tends to draw projectiles to center mass rather than to precision regions. So we reduce the precision scaler a bit and increase damage to the body. Precision hits still do bonus damage and overall DPS is increased. The end result is a dual utility weapon that fires hit scan, high damage projectiles while aiming down sights and rapid fire lobbed exploding tracking projectiles from the hip. It almost feels like a rapid fire grenade launcher that can transition to a precision death dealer with the press of a button. So that sounds absolutely epic too. They've also changed the way the Sturm and the Drang work. Here's what's happening. For those who don't know the core loop of the Sturm and Drang, kills with one weapon reload the other while it's stored. Consecutive kills with Drang will overload rounds into Sturm, capping out at a 20 round mag for a hand cannon. Currently the gameplay is focused on fast swapping and while fun, this lacks that exotic flair we're hoping to add. Sturm is also a bit unwieldy to use, so we're addressing that too. As standalone weapons, both Sturm and Drang have their base stats improved for ease of gameplay. Drang now has Rampage and a max app magazine to help rack up sidearm kills quickly. The true payoff comes in the overloaded Sturm magazine. Overflow rounds in Sturm now have a damage boost of 1.8 times. This allows for a significant damage increase in PvE and a crispy precision 2 tap in PvP. Just don't miss. Sounds awesome too, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I actually quite like the Drang anyway, so getting kills with this, switching to your Sturm, getting them nasty 2 taps is something I look forward to trying to do. Also, the Graviton Lance will change. The functionality concept is a weapon that fires two cosmetic void rounds that create a zero air resistance tunnel for a high caliber precision shot to fire through. The first two rounds have almost no recoil and prime the air. And the third round does high damage with no fall off. A kill knocks the body back with considerable force. It tumbles and then explodes. Resounding player feedback has been along the lines of looks great, sounds great, near explosion. I can't get kills in PvP because all the damage is at the end of the burst, kicks too hard for the follow up, and I can't reliably damage targets with the death explosion in any activity because the body goes flying too far backwards. All spectacle, not enough utility. To target the first pain point, we reduced the recoil of the burst, added some aim assist and changed it from 3 bursts to 2. This still plays into the fantasy of a low damage gravity neutralizing round, forming a projectile tunnel for the last bullet. It also allows us to ensure the damage per burst is at a competitive level for PvP engagements. In fact, it gives Graviton a slight mathematical edge against other pulse rifles. On the second feedback item, we did some tuning to the ragdoll body. We made it so that rather than violently flying backwards and likely flying out of range of a potential splash damage opportunity, the defeated opponent floats back and up. Then we made the explosion bigger, increased the damage and added some void field projectiles that seek out any remaining targets. Damn, that sounds ridiculous. Some great, great changes coming to exotics to make them feel 
more exotics and that's definitely the root ones you're taking there's no doubt about it i can't wait to see what they do to other exotics so if any new news drops people i will have you guys covered here on my channel so if you're new around here and enjoy daily destiny videos be sure to subscribe on that note guys i am out if you guys enjoyed the video leaving a like truly helps me out thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully people i will see you on that next one